This is Kristen Hedgecock. And I'm Ash Matson. You're listening to Apta Sophia, which means useful wisdom in the pursuit of biblical womanhood. Hello, my name is Ash Matson. I am here with my beautiful co host, Kristen Hedgecock. Hello. I'm getting much better at saying your last name without oh. freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> I always like psych myself out because I'm going to call you Hedgehog. It's okay. My kids call her Mrs. Hedgehog. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. It's okay. You can do it. Or Miss Kristen now. So, hey guys, how's it going? We're into another episode, and we are talking today about navigating friendships and relationships in the age of social media. I know, right? Yeah. Super exciting. But before we get into the meat of that episode, we have a very important question to discuss, and I have to pull it up. Because I already forgot it. (laughs) Would you rather, Kristen, would you rather be great at something no one cares about or average at something that everyone cares about? Uh, I would rather be great at something no one cares about. What I'm wondering here is (laughs) when you say like something that nobody, and when I say when you, this is like, a random put words together like would you rather generator I found online. So Uh thanks generator. But when it says that no one cares about, is it something that everybody should care about because it's essential to like life being the way that it is? you ask too many questions. No, it has to be qualified because it adds so much depth and meaning to the question. We have to search the depths of these very important This is the most important part of the episode, Kristen. (laughs) We say it every time. So is it something like, I don't care at all how my curtains were made, but you're really good at making curtains. I feel like people would care about that. (laughs) What is something that no, what is something? But see, like there's not here. Like there has to be a person in the world that cares about something that nobody, like you can always find somebody who, like they may not like at least be interested in like oh you're really good at shining silver that's awesome you're the best of, of it in the world i mean there's going to be like your niche groups of people that are going to need that <laughs> right like all the butlers like you'd be the best butler in the world cuz you like are the best polisher of things what is, I'm like, I just looked up a list. I'm like, maybe there's a list about of things that no one cares about. <laughs> oh my gosh, read it. There is. Tell me. Okay, here we go. Thinking that the people watching you cross the street from inside their cars are judging your face, clothing, or the way that you walk. They do. No one cares about that. Yes, I do. I totally judge. You do? Yes. Yeah. When people I do. Are walking yeah. in front, I do. Yeah, that is not true. Because I judge. Not, I You're judge. right. I care. Yeah. I'm like, why? and harder because I'm bored. I'm like, why are you wearing a unicorn <laughs> costume? I don't understand. Why are you walking so stupid? Why are you walking so slow. <laughs> Worrying what people think of your Facebook cover photo. I care about that I too. I care about that. I judge a lot. I will. Yeah. If I'm on Facebook, this is a perfect one. For yeah. This episode, I, you can tell a lot by a Facebook photo. Yeah. Thinking you're causing sidewalk congestion by moving to the side to check your phone, even though you're not sure what else to do. Okay, this is a dumb list. I found an even better one. <laughs> Twenty-five things no one cares about. The Odyssey Online. How much you hate Obama. How much you hate law enforcement. Your gains. <laughs> how how you want to do something but you're too lazy this isn't really as related as I was hoping but mm. um, yeah your bug bites is on the list okay. nobody cares about your bug bites I'm stop showing best people your bug bites bug bites how much sleep you got last night <laughs> there you go nobody cares about that because everybody's like uh, yeah me too yeah oh my goodness okay I gotta stop Anyways, I'm trying to think, what about things that the, I feel like things that Mr. Rogers would tell you about that nobody would think to look into. He's like, let's go to the factory, kids, and see how this is made. I don't know. What kinds of things could you even be good at that nobody would care about? I'm good at making belly button lint. I have no idea. Yeah? I saw some lady on TikTok, and this was actually pretty cool. So if you're, (laughs) 
We always are like, Kanye West, if you ever listen to this, yeah. we're sorry. Or I forget <laughs> yeah. who else we did this to. But she rolled up pieces of paper, mm-hmm. like pieces of scrap paper, into a little ball. Uh-huh. And then she continued to do that with like thousands of them until it turned into like this big spiral wheel of scrap paper. And it was like probably a half inch thick. And it almost looked like one of those circular rugs, but it was all made of little pieces of paper that she had like rolled. She was really good at that. And somebody bought it. No. She she mounted it on wood and then she coated it three times with this like acrylic clear coat or something. Uh-huh. And somebody purchased it. See, and it was so really cool, but it was somebody just somebody cared about it though and that's my point she was really good at something that most people would be like right most people but that one person cared about so i i just feel like that this is not a very good would you rather because somebody would care about me producing the best belly button lint that you could like knit a sweater from right and be like that's the softest sweater i've ever felt yeah like yeah. I don't know. So you would find somebody You're right. to care about it. You're right. It's like thinking, being like, think of nothing. You literally logically cannot think of nothing. We can't like comprehend that concept. <laughs> so nobody, especially in a world where everybody's freaking weird. Yeah. And nobody has an original thought. Right. Nobody. Yeah. Somebody has thought whatever you think, you're like, Eureka. No, somebody has thought that thought before and probably did it better than you and me, mm-hmm. not just you. Yeah. So yeah. This is this is a bunk. Would you rather question? It is. Do I even have to answer it? Yes. What is the alternative? Being average at something that everybody cares about. Well, I think I would choose that. Yeah, because they're like, mm, at least I don't suck at that. Like cooking, everybody cares about cooking. I'd yeah. like to be average at that. I'd like to be average at like a lot of things. I'm not even average at. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yes, we've talked about the shooting guns. <laughs> driving go-karts, those things that just continue to evade me in spite of my best efforts. But, um, yeah, I would like to be average at, like, social skills. <laughs> you have social skills. No, I leave every social engagement being like, why are you the way you are? <laughs> why? <laughs> why are you the way you are? And I pep talk myself. I do. I'm like, I'm one of those people where there's, if there's an awkward silence, I'm like, oh, I got a story for you. Nobody wants to hear your, st- it's like, this is where the, those lists come in. Nobody wants to hear my stories about how I have like something that's loosely related to what they were trying to talk about, oh but I can't God. handle the uncomfortable. And I'll go into social situations and be like, don't talk about yourself. People don't want to hear you talk about yourself. They want to hear them talk about them, their own selves. Yeah. And that's a so gift you, you can give to them. So ask questions. them questions. Yep. But no, I am not the question asker. I'm the, uh, uh, I'm going to just tell you all the things that have been on my mind. So <laughs> I'd like to be average at not doing that. That would be great. Okay. So uh, great, great chat. <laughs> I would, see, that's why you and I are friends because we both are very similar to that where I like to ask deep questions right off the bat. At least you're asking questions instead of being like, do you want to know what I was thinking about the other day? (laughs) When I was, I had this eureka moment. I'm sure nobody's ever thought of this before. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my goodness. All right. Uh, Would you rather this? Okay. So guys go to our Facebook or Instagram. I'm going to have a meme posted there for you to engage on. Let us know what you think. Maybe you will have some way more profound answers. Please tell us what are these things? Like, can you let us know what are these things that nobody cares about that you could be really good at? Mm-hmm. If you have one, I, yeah. If you have a really good one, I will send you an app to Sophia Mug. I'll, I'll post a picture of it for you. It says, home is where the kingdom advances. Just picture this in your mind because it's really cool. Go look on our social media. I will post a picture of the mug. If you have a really good example <laughs> and I'm like, that's a good, that's a really good one. I will send you a mug. So. Hey, I, I have something, even though I know this not well. You already have a mug. You don't... No, 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 Okay. I'm really... That's something that nobody cares about that I'm really good at. I'm really good about a goat impression. Want to see this? Ah, uh, yes, please. <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> and you might die. I'm buckling up right yeah. now. Okay, you ready? Okay, ready? 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 Huh? Ready? <laughs> you can't... See it? Maybe I'll post a video. Oh my goodness. Oh my goat impression. Oh my goodness. 
Yeah, that is something I'm really good at. She like lifted gave. her lips out and everything with her little tongue. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Kristen, how did you know that you were good at that? You because you have children and you have to make them laugh. And then you were like, "Man, this is no, a real talent." I've been doing this since I was a child. <laughs> <laughs> you know those you know those memes that are like it's okay for your kids to be born bored because they read books and they're super smart. <laughs> That's what I came up with when I was born. <laughs> they're like they they're and like they'll and they'll and they'll win the next Nobel Pre- Peace Prize. Nope. Kristen came up with the goat impression. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know it carried you into your 30s. Right. I'm really glad. I was blessed by that. I'm really glad I got to see that. <clears throat> yeah, my kids think it's awesome. Things that I know about you. So, yeah. Oh, my goodness. You so, just... we will also be posting. <laughs> I'm not going to put that on you. But maybe. Kristen might be posting a video. But I will. If you, I'm going to pick one person. I'm not making a million mugs. But I will pick one person. A handmade mug. Give us a really good one. Something you could be really great at that nobody would care about. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, And then our next would you rather for the next episode would be, would you rather have a song that you hate stuck in your head or an itch that you can't reach for a year? No. Yeah, that's a bad one. That's a pretty ruthless generator. Yeah. Okay. So moving into our topic for today, we wanted to talk about navigating friendship in the age of social media. I'm about to lose my voice or get real like cool, like Joan Jett raspy right now. Mm. I've had a wicked cold for like the last 10 days and I'm on the other side of it. But man, yeah, I can feel it. I can feel it. All right. So why do we, why do we want to talk about this, Kristen? Why, why indeed? Um, so one of the things that we, One of the reasons why we wanted to talk about it was I think it's I think this topic is especially highlighted with um, COVID and and some of the benefits of having social media. Like, can you imagine, you know, the Black Plague and just how like the lack of how information was like transferred and all that kind of stuff. Like you didn't even know about it until like somebody was already there and then like infected the whole, the whole town. And anyway, so we have, because of the plague, sorry, that was a little side tangent, but just, we have this big, like all your friends would die, right? All your friends would die. (laughs) Um, so we have this huge benefit of being and staying connected to people, even though we are not in front of them, even though that we aren't engaged with them on a face-to-face level. And so during the pandemic, obviously that um, component to this age of information that we're in in the technology age completely got highlighted because, well, you know, like I downloaded different apps to stay in touch. Like when everything was under lockdown, like Mm -hmm. I downloaded Marco Polo just so I could just see and interact and have some kind of conversation with my friends um, and we had Zoom and all this other kind of stuff. So um, yeah, but then it just also opened a whole other slew of things. So now what we're seeing on the other side of it that Ash and I noticed is that people are content, especially when it comes to church and fellowshipping and, and that type of thing, that they're trying to make it a part of their real life. So although these kinds of things has its place. We just wanted to like hash out, you know, some of the benefits, some of the risks, some of the, you know, some of the truths um, in scripture on how we're to address and interact with each other, especially fellow Christians. Right. Because the Lord has an objective purpose for the relationships that we have in various areas of our lives. And we also have a limited capacity Mm -hmm. to build into any of these endeavors. So it's a good thing. It's a worthy thing to, um, to jump into and just make sure that we have good perspective and balance and we're being purposeful in the way that we use social media in regards to our relationships. So one of the first questions we wanted to ask is, is it easier? Is there a draw towards building relationships online as compared to in person because it's easier to have them on social media? And if so, what would make them easier? Why would we be drawn to that? I would say one of the 
one of the reasons why I think having an online social media relationship with people is like social media has these natural algorithms that put people that are like-minded just automatically in front of you. And so you're not having like those awkward conversations in a group of people where you're trying to like find out how you can like connect with the other person. You have algorithms that are already like, hey, you like Chip and Joanna Gaines. So you like HGTV. So we're going to put this person in front of you because they also like that. And hey, did you know that this person also likes that? So it really takes some of the um, some of the difficult uh, processes out of just making a friend and finding a friend. Right. And there's this beyond just like the individual friendships that we have with people. There's this grander thing of like having niche communities Mm -hmm. that we're a part of, especially in Facebook groups. Sure. And that's a big one. Yeah. And it can be really specialized, especially in the reformed community. There's like reformed fashion. There's reformed home decor. There's reformed homesteading. There's reformed... RV living. Oh. Yes, I just discovered this because I've been all about that life. There's reformed, (laughs) I mean, you, reformed homemaking, reformed. Homeschooling. Homeschooling, reformed parenting, all kinds of things. Um, And it really gets super specific. Mm -hmm. Um, Whatever hobby, whatever side tangent, whatever show series, book series you like, Mm -hmm. whatever, you know, you can really surround yourself just with people who are connected to you through that Mm -hmm. and depending on what you're into you can really get away from the core crucial fundamental Mm -hmm. these are the things we must have in common and get into you know something a little more Mm -hmm. finessed in a negative way but um those communities also can become so important to us that they start to take place the place of real community with the church, the local church, or people that the Lord have have placed directly in front of us. Mm -hmm. Um, Because it's always a trade-off. You only have so many minutes in the day. You only have so much capacity for relationships, so many words that you can say, so many thoughts that you can think. We're finite. And the way that we spend those things matters. And so, um, and again, I I just want to keep saying um, my intention, I don't think Kristen's intention here is to say, these Facebook communities are wrong to be a part of or, um, you know, relationships with people that you have formed over social media that you may not have met in person are wrong to have. It's right. just you. Ha- we have to be careful and we have to be purposeful. So, um, yeah, I think it some some things that make it a little bit easier to have relationships is um, I feel like. A lot of people who may be more awkward in social situations are <clears throat> feel um, less uh, self-conscious because they can be careful. Like when you're putting things into text, mm-hmm. you can be more purposeful about what you're saying. Mm-hmm. You can be more purposeful about how you're portraying yourself. Yeah, you can backspace. Yes. <laughs> you, you know, and this is one of the benefits and also one of the downfalls of social media is that and developing relationships over social media is that the person is only seeing what you allow them to see of yourself mm-hmm. and of your life. So you can portray yourself in. I mean, there's whole shows around catfishing people. Oh, yeah. And you can portray yourself as whatever you like and mm-hmm. you can develop really deep, long standing yeah. relationships with people that are based on total lies Mm -hmm. um and they would not know the difference they're not there to see that you look nothing like your facebook profile right they're not there to see that you in spite of everything that you say online about how to keep your house tidy like raising my hand right now (laughs) i feel like i have all kinds of great ideas but Kristen knows she's in my house it's not horrible but i mean i still have a long ways to go as far as like learning how to organize like i would like to so you know um It's just, it's such a different thing. And so I think a lot of people are drawn to it because they feel like they, they are not as exposed and they can be Mm -hmm. way more in control of what the people see. It's a very polished representation of what you really are. Right. And you can be way more careful. You're not going to put your foot in your mouth quite Mm -hmm. as easy. Right. Yeah. Me. Like, I like the backspace. (laughs) No, I'm not going to say it. Like, (laughs) you ever see those memes where it's just like, you know, I think I saw one of like a dog groomer like interacting with a person like a potential client and like what they want to say versus like what they actually end up saying and it's just uh-huh. you know anyway it's just funny but 
yeah, there's, you know, what's what's the true heart there of that, like, dog groomer who's like, you're an idiot because you want me to, like, come in two hours and it's an emergency or whatever. Uh-huh. And you don't get the fact that I, I'm i booked for the day and no, I don't. You know, it was right. something like this. But, yeah, obviously that's not what she presented. That's not what she said. Um, she was very polite via text, but you, mm-hmm. you know, lose a lot of that. Um, body language and nonverbals and right. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> it's way more convenient. I mean, yeah. technology makes it convenient. And sure. we could go back and forth because there's there are things about being friends with people in real life sure. that, that are more convenient. Like if I don't text you all week, I know I'm going to see you on Sunday at church. Sure. Um, you may have to go a little bit further to maintain a relationship that you have with someone online when you don't mm-hmm. have that physical visual reminder Mm -hmm. but at the same time you're it's always at your fingertips Mm -hmm. you have your phone there Mm -hmm. you can go to that community and you can engage whenever you feel like it whenever you're bored we know that like social media addiction is a huge thing Mm -hmm. um fidgeting and finding your phone and getting on there and just mindlessly scrolling or um you know yeah (laughs) and we say this not because we have mastered I've lost no I know for myself (laughs) yeah we say this not because we have mastered it um in our (laughs) in our lives but you know, like part of the reason why we even started this podcast is we see all these issues that we ourselves are working through, wanting to work through. Right. And we're presenting information mostly to ourselves, but also like, hey, other people can be edified by this too. So please don't think that we right. have it all together. Just being transparent right. as is a cool buzzword. Um yeah. Right. And that's one of the things that we talked about before we even started the, started this podcast is that we wanted the obje- objective standard of God's word to be the thing that we're presenting right. here mm-hmm. because we don't want to be the standard and we, we're learning and growing at the same time. Sure. Um, so that's always our goal. And we're getting our, our butt spanked mm-hmm. by it too. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Every week. This topic, I was like, oh. especially in regards to social media. Yeah. So what are some of the drawbacks to these, to having relationship in a social media context? Yeah, I would say like some of the drawbacks that I that I listed is <clears throat> you can only grow so much. You can only grow to a point in a relationship. Um, kind of talking back to the catfishing, you know, as a perfect example. And I know a couple of people that have been ca- like smart, intelligent people. Um, and but because you aren't there present in people's lives and really like doing as a common, you know, evangelical thing to say doing community or doing life with people <laughs> just, I just pulling out lo- all I just the- love that we do life together we Kristen. just do life together whatever that <laughs> really means I'm not really sure either but um yeah so you can grow in relationship with people for sure there are strong connections that are formed via online and in letters and other other than in other than in person but at some point that has to grow into like in person and um, yeah, it the best way for it to grow is to grow in person um, to have a deeper thing. Um, the The other drawback is just kind of piggybacking on that is you don't really have that ironing sharpening iron. Like you don't you're not bumping elbows. You're not you know rubbing shoulders. You're not again doing life together. You're not um, you know coming over to my house and. And seeing the harsh way I'm, this is an example, you know, hypothetically, (laughs) harsh way I'm speaking to my children and, you know, calling me out on that and being like, hey, what's going on? You know, are you having a hard day or, you know, like it's, uh, that is a, it's just a huge drawback because you don't have the accountability that you would naturally have just um, with people who are your who you are in close network and close friends with. And that is, you know, not necessarily a good place to be in your life when you don't have, when all of the people, the close people that are the people that you consider close relationship with are all people online. They don't have uh, a way to really speak into your life because they are seeing just, like we said, a polished version of that and whatever you want them to see. Whereas it is obvious if you have, you know, a drinking problem or a lazy problem or a 
you know, yelling at your children problem, a patient's problem. It's, it, those things are harder to, harder to see and easier to identify. Right. In an in-person, you know. Right. And that's one of the things that God intends for our relationships mm-hmm. with one another as Christians is mm-hmm. that we will be calling one another out on sin, that right. ironing will be iron. Or iron. ironing. I know. We, we both said it. Iron will be sharpening iron. Yeah. Um, and that's one thing about hand picking and hand selecting your friends in that type of environment where it is so specialized and so... And that's not to say that you won't meet people that you have differences sure. with. You know, people are all individuals. And um, you can have really meaningful conversations where you're confessing sin and you're praying for one another and you're speaking truth to each other through the scripture and you're building one another up all over social media. I have many friends that I've met on social media that I've been friends with for years and years and um, friends from high school that I haven't seen since high school that mm-hmm. I have um, built really rich Christian relationships with wonderful stuff. But again, like Kristen said, they they only know what I'm showing them. And God willing, I will be honest about that. But yeah. they're dependent on my own self-awareness and right. self-examination yeah, yeah. and uh, and willingness to come and tell them about sin that I'm in mm-hmm. um, in order for us to have those conversations as compared to um, if they see that I'm consistently you know, um, spending my money in an unwise way or right. not keeping my word or speaking to my husband in a disrespectful manner, th- they won't know that. Right. And if all of my relationships were exclusively online mm-hmm. because that's what was comfortable for me and I found people that I just resonated with online and I chose to spend all of my relational capacity on those people, mm-hmm. that would be missing from my life. Yeah. And that's not what God intends for us. Mm-hmm. So we have to be careful that there's a balance there and we do realize where there are limitations there. Um, beyond that, when you're struggling with something and you are, um, you're portraying your issues with someone who, you, who only knows you through um, your online interactions, who do not have a relationship with your family mm-hmm. um, or with other people in your church, other people in that community, um, you really get into the situation where any anything that you tell them that they're you're asking them to judge and to give you counsel on, they're only hearing your side of the story. Mm-hmm. And generally, when you come to someone and you're asking for counsel, you want them to be somebody who can really give you like straight talk and um, and actually be a help to you and. Uh, this verse came to mind. Um, it is Proverbs eighteen seventeen. The one who states his case first seems right until the other comes and examines him. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times I think we can get ourselves in hot water in um, being that person who brings an issue to someone and also being the person who jumps in to give somebody counsel on something or to make a judgment call when we don't have all of the information. Mm-hmm. A woman can come to you and tell you, all kinds of things about her husband and her perception of their relationship <clears throat> or her perception of what's going on with her kids. But you do not have all the information and you cannot have all of the information. Those limitations are there in in-person relationships too, mm-hmm. but it's not quite so easy to pull the wool over right. because the physical proximity limitations are really only there over social media. Mm-hmm. You could dig deeper practically if you know the person in person and they're asking you to be that for them. So we have to be really careful to understand that too. There's a way in which we really can't be the kind of counselor that we should be to people online. And as much as we may trust that person, we have to be careful not to bear false witness or encourage them in a way that's sinful Mm -hmm. um, by allowing them to um, only give us their side and not really be clear. Right. Yeah. Is there anything else you can think of that might be a pitfall? Um, No, I think you've addressed it. I mean, I kind of wanted to touch back. I forgot that I had a couple of things in terms of, like, the benefits. I would say one of the benefits that I have really been blessed by is um, I mentioned in another episode um, that talks about 
um, we talk about emotional resilience and I don't know in which order we're going to post these. So it's just look out for it if we haven't posted it already is <clears throat> I was talking about several people who I know have had gone through, who I know have gone through trials in their life and they were very open about it on their Facebook. And one of the benefits of social media is you can choose to bless others and edify people um, in, you know, not directly, not, um, you know, to a more general audience by the things that you post. And so I would say that that is an encouragement to mm -hmm. people in, uh, in a, just in a, just, what am I trying to say? To try to check your intentions and be purposeful in what you post. And not that everything has to have a Jesus fish on it, you know, metaphorically <laughs> when you're people posting. People still do that. <laughs> I saw one actually the other day and I was like, wow, do people, and it was on a new car. I was like, wow, do people still? Wow. Okay. I mean, cool, but wow. But yeah, so metaphorically speaking, I'm not saying that everything has to be, you know, about Jesus or, you know, whatever, but um, yeah, what are your, what are your intentions behind Facebook, your Facebook post? What is your intentions behind that Instagram photo? What is your intentions behind that TikTok? And I don't know, I just have been really encouraged by following this person um, in her walk with God and in, in, in her walk through this trial that I, I really would not have been blessed because, well, we used to be, um, yeah, we used to live in close proximity to each other and now we don't. And so it's much harder to get together, but, um, yeah, just that I'm able to like continue in spirit to walk with her in a way, um, through this hard season and that, that social media did bless me in that way. And I know other people have been blessed by following her and um, reading stuff. So it definitely has its place. We're not, you know, trying to say, you know, delete everything and, you know, live under a rock or anything like that. But just, you know, bringing up concerns and um, just things that we need to be aware of as godly women and pitfalls that we can fall into. Okay, now back to the pitfalls. <laughs> I would say um, I want to turn in 2 Thessalonians 3.11, and I'll talk about a pitfall that I see um, on in Facebook or the use of, not Facebook, I keep saying Facebook. That's the one that I'm mainly on. That's my pitfall is Facebook. <laughs> um, I don't really use other uh, social media as much, and probably because I'm old. Um, here we go. So, for we hear that some among you walk in idleness, not busy at work, but busy bodies. Now, such persons we command and encourage in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Okay. So, I would say that one pitfall, I think, Anybody can fall into, but I think this is a particular pitfall for women is um, to be a busybody. Mm -hmm. And obviously, they are not talking about social media because obviously we did not have social media in the ancient times. But it is talking about a person who makes it their job to go around and go from door to door is another um uh, another uh, verse that talks about uh, the person that goes from door to door, um, spreading gossip and slander and all that other kind of stuff. And so um, people can get into the trap of getting into going door to door by means of different social media apps and just nosing around just for the sake of nosing around. Mm -hmm. And all the while, they are neglecting the work that is set before them. Mm -hmm. um, whether that's whether you don't have kids and you're just working in an office, um, whose time are you doing that on? 
Right. Uh, whether that is you are a mom and a wife and you have duties at home and whose time are you on? Like, are you getting upset with your kids because they're bothering you and interrupting your mm-hmm. social media time when really you should be homeschooling them? This is me. <laughs> um, where, you know, you're just like, oh, okay, yes, I need to put my phone away and not get sucked into this, you know, debate or whatever. Um, it's a form of being idle. It's a form of idleness, which is, mm-hmm. you know, uh, not condoned in scripture. Um, it is something that we need to avoid. So I would say that's probably for me. And I think for many of, I think the women in our, that, that, that I see, um, and I, men do it too. So I'm not trying to pick on women, but that's who I'm picking on right now is, uh, yeah, we tend to make other people's business, our business and completely leave the plow and get distracted and things are going to hell in a handbasket at home because we are not doing the work that we are set that is set before us. Right. I've noticed in my own self, and this is something I try to be careful about doing now, um, that especially in mom's groups Mm -hmm. and groups where people are asking a lot of questions Uh and they do not have, they don't seem to have the leadership that they should have in their own life Mm -hmm. in regards to having a Titus II type mentor from their local body Uh or um, other people in their life that can um, counsel them in real life. So you become that to them. You Mm -hmm. see them post and you decide to engage with whatever issue they're having. Mm -hmm. And then you get familiar with their story and then you take them under your wing, all of which are good things to do. And I'm not saying you should never, ever do that. But some people will make that their business all the day long. And out of a good desire in their heart to help these people, Mm -hmm. um, one, they can enable them. Mm -hmm. By being that person when the person really what they need is somebody in their life. Right. You know, being that for them. Two, it goes right back to what we just said about you don't even know what is actually happening in this person's life. Mm -hmm. Usually when they're coming to to social media to bemoan their marriage or other things, I'm not saying that it's never legitimate, but you do not know for sure that their perception of what's happening is real and they're asking you to make a judgment call, Mm -hmm. usually, in a bigger way, usually, on social media at that point. Um, And then... I mean, it's just, it's not, it's not like a, it's just a practical thing. You only have so much time. And the Lord has put your local church before you as your primary relational mission field. Right. Those people are not always going to be in your wheelhouse in regards to you have all the same personality types. You like the same things. You don't rub each other the wrong way. It's okay to want people in your life that are like that, that you just click with, that you have things in common with. Not a big deal. But are all your relationships supposed to be that finessed? No, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. That's not how we're sanctified. That's not how the body of Christ functions. God has put all kinds of difficult people together Mm -hmm. that have all kinds of different giftings and backgrounds backgrounds and all kinds of stuff like that to teach us how to grow together in unity and have relationships and friendships with these people in spite of those differences. Mm -hmm. And so one thing I see is women neglecting or maybe not because I can't exactly see it. I can't see that you're neglecting. I know that I personally have fed a lot more into relationships online than I should with my local church. Mm. And that is something that the Lord has made me aware of. And this Mm. is kind of Mm -hmm. one of the things that made me desire to talk about this in the first place is how easy it is to feel like you're doing good. Mm, And there's also this element of it is like you like to feel like the mentor. Right. Yeah. Right. And it's easy to look like you have all your stuff together when yeah. you're giving people advice online. Right. Too. Sure. So there's that yeah. like there's that element of it, too, yeah. where you're like, oh, man, like, look at me go. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not I mean, I just it maybe it's not always there and maybe it's not you, but it's just it's so easy to slip into these things. And it's so good to be on guard again. So that's definitely one of the pitfalls is you can really get into the role of like, hey, I'm going to be a mentor. And it seems so benevolent and like. And, and healthy and good, mm-hmm. and you're enabling the person, and then you're also just really, like, putting yourself in danger of neglecting, like, are you doing all that you can to be that person for people in your church? Mm-hmm. I doubt I doubt we all are, like, really doing all that we can. 
Right. That's that's the work the Lord has set before you. What about your children? When you're online, like giving women advice, what about your children? You only have so many years with them. Right. Eh. Yeah. All right. I know. <laughs> I loved that you had posted something about the summers. And I'd heard that before. And I don't know where the originator of it is, but um, our friend Mariah, she... I love her. Began, yeah. Sweet lady. Began posting that several years ago. I think when her oldest was really young. I don't even remember. But really young. Just counting down the summers that we have with our kids. And so it just, man, it just makes the universe that did seem so big. And just like I have this, you know, especially when you have little kids and you're just like, in the thick of it and it just seems like the days are like years and then it just brings that all to such a perspective of right. like I only have you know 18 more summers or right and for me I have six six more summers yeah with my oldest and six. he is counting them down. I bet. Yeah, they're always like, can't wait to be a grown-up. Can't wait to get out in the yeah. world. And they're like, he oh, reminds goodness. me so much of myself. He <laughs> is 12 going on 42. Oh, 42. Like, he's just, he's so That's just, good he skipped his 20s because that's a hard time that for a lot a of people. <laughs> yeah, especially for boys, I feel. Well, I guess for girls too. But yeah, no, he just is so, I don't know, very wise and just just eager to work and to just be a grown up. And I was very much like that too. I just wanted nothing to be, nothing to do with being a kid. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so he's just like, I only have six more, six more years, six more years left at home. But Ugh. all that to say that, yeah, look at the mission field that God has set before you, your family, your kids, your church. And those are really what, um, you know, the primary things that you can pour yourself into and get, you know, return on too. Mm -hmm. Like they are there for you. They are your, the local body is there for you to bring you meals in dark times. They're there to be a shoulder to cry on during loss or pain and trials. Um, it's very hard to have that in an online friendship. Right. You just can't. Mm -hmm. Not in the same way. And to be that. Right. I mean, a lot of people will say, well, that's not how my church is. So, well, you might have to be the first person to be that. Right. The Lord has placed you in the church. And usually when he um, He shows us where there's a lack, mm -hmm. it's not so we can complain about it. Right. It's and whine about it. It's so that we can fix it. Yeah. <laughs> or at least like yeah. be the first person to take the step to be something about that. One more thing I thought about as far as pitfalls is that, and I think this could go with our normal day-to-day -day relationships too, just in mm -hmm. the age where we can pick up our phone and text somebody or Marco Polo mm -hmm. or um, Facebook Messenger them at any point. There, It's harder to maintain boundaries mm -hmm. as to when you're going to be communicating with a person mm -hmm. when your relationship with them is online. Mm -hmm. And that can really throw things off in regards to being focused on your duties, being focused on your kids mm -hmm. when you're in the home being focused on just managing your time well mm -hmm. and making sure that you're working efficiently uh, to the glory of the Lord in your house and really stewarding everything that he's given you in a right way. Mm -hmm. um, we have been, I know I have been really kind of jacked up with the <laughs> like, with the, um, you know, the endorphin and the cycle of swiping and picking up and fidgeting oh, with the yeah. phone and feeling like you have to check your phone all the time mm -hmm. and how that interrupts your um, workflow yeah. and your just everything that you're doing. Yeah. And when you feel like there's this person that you have relationship with that maybe texted you right. and maybe they need to talk to you about or maybe, you know, you're going to be more tempted to, oh, I need to check, oh, I need to check, right. oh, I need to check. And having those boundaries there is not quite as easy to navigate, even with people that you know in real life, but especially with people on social media mm -hmm. or when you feel like you need to be present. Mm -hmm. um, it's really easy when you have a community of people on social media where you feel like you have a voice. Mm -hmm. There's something about social media, and I was talking to my sister about this the other day. Like, okay, I'm going to get a little dark here, okay? Okay. I feel like 
we know in some way that like, and this might be a little too dark, but we're going to die and nobody's going to remember us. Mm-hmm. Nobody. Like, Maybe a few generations after our death, people mm-hmm. will remember us. But after that, I mean, even the greats. Right. So many. How many greats do we not know about? Yeah. Or no minimal. I don't even really care that much. Like people yeah. that have accomplished crazy things yeah. and have contributed to humanity and like, you know, and that's okay. God did it. We're not here to be remembered. We're here to, to glorify Christ and to build into other people. That's mm-hmm. really how our legacy is continued. But I think that like we all have this, this feeling um, but social media gives us this platform where we feel like we have a voice and we feel like we have this importance. And it like um, we can have that feeling when we're when we're uh, present and prevalent in a big group of people. Mm-hmm. And so we can feel like this um, this like nagging feeling of like burden to go and continue to be that. We don't want to lose that. Mm-hmm. And I know I felt that on social media before. Mm-hmm. Like people listen to me. People think that I say things well. People, right. you know, and yeah. I don't want to lose that. It gives you this feeling of importance. Like you really matter mm-hmm. or you're really making a difference. And it's not to say you aren't. Right. But is it in the way that the Lord intends you to? Because mm-hmm. we have this longing to be impactful. Mm-hmm. And social media can make us feel like we're really impacting things, especially when you have this circle and this algorithm and all these people that right. are there spinning around you. But there are people that the Lord has placed before you and letting go of that. And I know this cause I'm, I'm like getting off of Facebook right now. Mm-hmm. Lord willing. I've said this so many times. I'm like, <laughs> I'm really trying to do it this time. Okay. But, um, it feels like, Oh, I'm throwing away this opportunity mm-hmm. to be impactful mm-hmm. when, and I'm just doing small potato stuff by just focusing on the people that are directly in front yes, of me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But, that's not how it is. It's backwards. Right. right. That's so not backwards. A, yeah, that's not at all like what the Lord, yeah. like you don't walk away from scripture with God does not appreciate what you sow into generations mm-hmm. because whatever it is that you sow will be reaped generations upon generations upon generations. So if you want this like lasting, like impactful, eternal sense right. of being and belonging invest in your children Mm -hmm. invest in that eternal they are immortal in a sense of Mm -hmm. they will live forever and they will have children and they will lord willing live forever in christ Right. right so like that is what we need to focus on like those are good deep desires to like want to be impactful and want to be known for for forever Right. right. That's a God, I think, a God given, you know, inspired emotion to have. But let's focus it in the right area. Right. He right. doesn't leave us to our own. Well, how should I implement this like desire and this feeling? He's given that direction yeah. to you. Yeah. Instead of being like, well, I'm really well known in this uh, online community and I could grow that. Right. I could grow my Instagram following. Right. I, I could, could be an influencer. I could be influence a, yeah. this. Influence your kids. <laughs> <laughs> right? Boom. Boom. <laughs> Influence it. Influence your kids. Yes. For real. Yeah. Like. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, it's just that could either be a really dark thought that everybody's going to forget you yeah. or it can be freeing. Yeah. And I think that we need to hear that a little bit more because sure. social media really has this allure of, like, being impactful in a um, in a grander way. And mm-hmm. they're, everybody's going to forget you. You could... <laughs> You could write the biggest, you, I mean, Matt Walsh, Ben mm-hmm. Shapiro, mm-hmm. all these people I love, and they're wonderful, and they're impacting me. Yeah. They're impacting, you know, I'm not right. I'm not plugging anybody right now. It's just the first two people that came to my mind. So um, if you ever listen to this Ben Shapiro. <laughs> <laughs> I love Hashtag you. Hashtag girl. Okay, I was just kidding. <laughs> um, but anyways, all going to be forgotten. Yeah. All, all of us. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Donald Trump. Yep. Who? Someday. She's probably got a longer Sunday. lifespan than me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. What's our next question? <clears throat> um, Good question. I stepped away from Yeah. That. What does scripture say about the purpose of fellowship and relationships? We've kind of touched on this a little bit. Oh, yeah. But, um, I mean, I think it's important to talk about, like, 
And this is one thing I, I really want to commend to you, the Grace Agenda conference talk from Rachel mm-hmm. Jankovic on mm-hmm. friendship. Um, she talks a lot about the foundation of friendship is um, going in, going in the right direction together. Like you have a purpose, you're yoked together and you're going, you're headed towards something. You're um, obviously the most foundational thing that has to be there in any friendship is loyalty and submission to Christ as King and a common purpose in building that kingdom together. But it really has like helped me to focus so much on how friendship is built through this like we are working towards something together. Mm-hmm. We're getting our hands dirty together. It's not just like sitting opposite each other with a cup of coffee talking about our feelings. Some of the best friendships and the most solid friendships that are built are built on we have a common goal and we are accomplishing something for the Lord together right now. Sure. Um, and that is something to keep in mind in regards to just making sure that that is present in your relationships in some way and also realizing that there are limitations to what you're able to do with someone when your relationship is strictly on social media. Mm -hmm. Um, One of the primary mission fields that the Lord has placed before you, and I believe it's second only to family, is the local church. So important. We are to be people that are zealous for good works. And those things are not just kind words. Those good works are practical, meeting the needs of people, bearing one another's burdens, um, you know, helping people out with their kids when they're crazy, (laughs) bringing a meal over, like Mm -hmm. being there to hug somebody when they're crying. All of those things, we can't function without that. God did not create us to be just um, these like, you know, uh, we're not just words and emotions. Mm -hmm. We need that practical, tangible thing. And that can't be separated from friendship, at least not all friendship. Right. Yeah. We need to be like actually getting, like literally getting our hands dirty (laughs) together. Yeah. No, totally agree. Um, Another thing that popped into my head uh, when I was going over our questions and the outline and stuff is in Ephesians 5. I'm going to read chunks of it. I'm not going to read the whole, um, the whole all of it. (laughs) Um, but I'm going to read chunks of it just in terms of what are we, like, what is the purpose of fellowship? What are we, how are we to engage and interact with each other? This is something that, um, like, I was challenged by a couple years ago. You and I had talked about just in terms of just friendship, this this mm-hmm. subject of friendship and what we do together, what we enjoy together, what maybe we shouldn't enjoy together um, and stuff. So if the shoe fits just bear this in mind. Um, So Ephesians 5, verse 1, I'm going to start there. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not be named among you as improper among the saints. Let there be no filthiness, no foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place, but instead let there be thanksgiving. I'm going to hop down to um, verse 15. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is and do not get drunk with wine for this is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, um, addressing one another, different versions say teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. So this is just such a big picture of what fellowship and community looks like within the local body and the local church. And something that is very difficult to sustain um, in a social media um, type platform. And um, where stuff like um, coarse joking and covetousness and um, all these things, it shouldn't even be named. It shouldn't even be something that we... Um, 
yeah, it shouldn't even be something that we even entertain as um, and a, as entertainment. And then, of course, we aren't left to our own devices on what fellowship looks like. Um, scripture, uh, this gives us what it does look like, and it does look like being filled with the Spirit and admonishing and teaching each other in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Um, so I like how... Um, I've seen many churches do this, like in home groups and stuff like that. I actually love how we make psalm sings um, a part of kind of the liturgy of our home group is it just really um, fulfills this scripture verse. And it is calling everybody's attention back to the Lord and not, um, and not so-and-so's great leadership skills in the small group. It mm-hmm. just really sets the tone for the entire group and um and also just fulfilling scripture like (laughs) i don't know so this is much much harder done um online in a social media in a disconnected way and um yeah just i don't know i just really like how that encapsulates and just addresses like fellowship just the, the broader context of what fellowship looks like and what we need to be entertained by and what we need to be um, our relationships geared towards and focused on. We just thought it was worthwhile to take a step back and examine these things. It's important for us to be purposeful in the relationships that we choose to build into. And it really is a choice. It should be. Um, All of our relationships, there are sometimes there are relationships that the Lord just brings you into And it's okay to be open to that in wisdom. However, if all of your relationships are just happening to you, um, it's a good thing to think through that. We only have the capacity for so many, so many close friendships. Uh, We only have so many minutes in the day. Like I said, we only have so many thoughts. We only have so many words to speak. And we have clear duties laid before us. And so it's important no matter who you are or where you are or um, what your relationship blend looks like, (laughs) to be careful, to be careful that you're aware that there needs to be a balance, to be aware of both the benefits and also the limitations of each of your relationships and just to be wise in the way that you're dealing with those things. So you want to take us out, Kristen? Yeah, so go love God, go love your husband, and go love your kids.